Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight, I'm actually really excited to bring to you the first quarterly Patreon pool selected whiskey to review. So a guy named Barry, he's one of my Patreons, he suggested that I try the Glen Murray 12 year Speyside Single Malt Scotch. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. The Glen Murray Distillery, unfortunately, unlike a lot of the other distilleries I've talked about, doesn't really have all that much that's interesting about it. Um, there's no lore, there's no tragedy, there's not even like a character like Johnny Walker or, or Jack Daniels behind the, behind the brand. The one thing that does make this whiskey special is that it is in the Speyside region. Now, you may remember from some of my other videos that the Speyside area is world-renowned. You know, I mean, everybody knows Speyside scotches. Um, the area itself is very fertile, so most of the distilleries in that area are able to grow their own barley. Um, you know, you've got the River Spey right there, so you've got access to water in order to make your whiskey. And just in general, it's a, a really nice area. It's got great climate. So a few things to actually know about this distillery, though, are that it used to be a brewery. And back in 1897, they converted it from that brewery over to a distillery. And it was running fine for a number of years until around 1910 or so, where the owners of Glen Murray um, also owned Aberlour, and Aberlour caught on fire. So they ended up having to close down Glen Murray in order to kind of deal with that and, and rebuild. So it remained closed for about 10 years, and Glen Morangie came along and bought it. And they kind of got things, everything back up and running. And they took it from a small distillery all the way up to about 2008, it was producing about 4 million or so liters a year, and then it was bought again and you know, added some more stills and, and they raised it another million and a half liters. So that's really all there is to say about the distillery. Aged in ex-bourbon barrels imported from North America, Glen Murray is a very standard Speyside whiskey. It's just water and malted barley. Now they have their typical offerings of different years as every whiskey seems to have, but their classic edition is generally aged about seven years, but it's basically a no age bottle. Then they have the 10 year, 12 year, 15, 18, and 25. And they also have kind of their specialty offerings, which is their normal product finished in uh, say like a port cask or a sherry cask, or even a Chardonnay cask, which is something that you don't see very often. All right, now for the best part of the review, the nosing and the tasting. So while I'm pouring this, let me just remind you that subscribing to the channel, if it's something that you're interested in, if you've watched a few of my videos and you like what you see, subscribing is free. You know, it really helps the channel. It helps me get exposed to more people. And just in general, it's a good motivator for me. So if it's something that you're enjoying, I would appreciate the subscribe. So let's go into the nosing. One thing that I hope you pick up, and I, I know at least Barry's watching this with me. Hopefully more of you are. The, the nose from here is very distinct, so go ahead and give it a nose. So Speyside has you know, very similar things among most of its whiskeys, at least in you know, the earlier ages. So you get a lot of fruit in this. Specifically, you get apple and pear, and maybe a little bit of apricot. So just very fruity very fruity whiskey. You also get a little bit of sugar. So um, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. So hopefully you're seeing uh, pretty much that the taste matches the nose. You've got immediate taste of fruit. Um, maybe not quite as specific as the nose gives you, but there's definitely some like apricot or maybe even peach in, in the, the tasting. However, there, there is one thing that I have to call myself out on here. During like my first, might have even been the first episode, but at the very least, let's say like first three episodes, somewhere in there, I talk about a, person's who, a person whose review I read said that whiskey could taste like a birthday cake. And I remember specifically calling that person out and as like the only possible thing a person could taste in a whiskey that would just be wrong. <laughs> and no, this does not taste like a birthday cake, but 
it does taste like that really sugary frosting that you get on kind of like a cheaper cake. Like think if you bought like a, like a sheet cake for like $4, the the icing that you're gonna have on that cake tastes a lot like this whiskey weird right but if that's what that person meant then i take it back but i still think that person's probably dumb <laughs> anyway um the finish on this is very very smooth as you can tell like i just kind of rolled right back into talking there's nothing there's no real bite here um and in general the you know the legs are nice it's 80 proof so it's not going to have crazy legs but it does have uh, uh some going on so Anyway, this is about all I've got to say about Glen Murray. As I mentioned, it's not a terribly interesting whiskey. It's not a bad whiskey. Um, I would definitely suggest giving it a shot because it's only like $35. This may end up being a space side that you keep in your cabinet. So I would suggest giving this one a go. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. If you want, I've got links in the description below. Um, everything from you know the distillery to you know, my Facebook page, the channel, playlists, all that stuff. So check that out if you want to learn a little bit more. Otherwise, I'll see you here on the next Whiskey Dictionary.